Hi submarine friends, welcome back to watching me build my diesel electric submarine. Well today I've been working on my exhaust system and boy am I tickled pink. You know when you spend some money and you get nice stuff, it really pays. So what I did is I bought a kit with these two inch pipe bends and you notice they're mandrel bends. So they're not like your typical muffler shop bend where it's got a big crinkle here. Isn't that nice? Gee. And this was a U that I cut in half. So that gave me this piece right here. Doesn't that look nice? Wow. Now I don't know if you can see it, but there's a flange here. So it's two round discs that bolt together. And that's how the exhaust system connects to the discharge. And then that flange section just unthreads from the through hull piece. So on the outside of the hull is a nipple with a valve which is submerged in water and then on this side the nipple comes inside it's threaded and so then my flange assembly just screws into that and then the pipe bolts to the flange. I still have to make a gasket but that's pretty easy peasy and um, doesn't that look nice? So I've got a 45 here, a 45 here, and then a 90 here, all mandrel bent, expanded so they just slip into each other. It's going to be super easy to weld together. Usually I'm trying to weld muffler tubing butted together. So now, you know, you can put some heat to it, which gives you a nicer looking weld. And then this pipe here is just a mock-up. This is actually where the water cooled section goes. So it is on an angle. But that's okay because I want to keep this tight so that, you know, I, I don't want it, this, like, this is the, the, the width of the hull in here. And so I don't want this protruding past that. I want it to stay clean. Um, the heat from this might go into the hydraulic reservoir a bit. I don't know. But I do want to insulate this pipe somehow. I'm not sure how yet. I have some... I have some chimney pipe here, insulated chimney pipe that I picked up at the metal pile in the dump. It's pretty nice looking stuff, but it's not to coat anymore. It's a bit too thin. But that insulation in that pipe should work well for this if I have a way to wrap it. So I have to figure that out. Or maybe, I'm, I gotta do some research. Maybe I can find some, some kind of a sock, insulated sock that goes over it. I don't know. Maybe somebody has an idea for that. And then this section again is water cooled, so that's fine. So I'm just tickled pink with this. So I'll just bring the stinger for the welder in here. I won't tack this one because this is temporary. I'll tack those together. I'll take it out and I'll weld it nicely secured on a bench so it's easy to weld. Boy, I'm really pleased with that. So that's the exhaust. So the next thing I have to do, and oh, no, the other thing is this valve here, I made sure that this air intake valve, it doesn't interfere with that. And there's clearance for insulation from this valve to this pipe. So I'm going to have to obviously extend this somehow, divert the air. Well, actually it could probably just stay right like this. But I want to be able to catch any water that comes out, but you know, I could really keep it simple and just hang a little pail off of that or something here to catch water that might drip in from a big giant wave that the air snorkel bypass doesn't catch. Yeah, that won't be a problem. This is really coming along nice. I'm telling you, I am tickled pink. This is good. You see I painted my hydraulic tank. Got an LED light here to hook up yet, but it's so bright in here. I don't even know if I need it. This is great. So the next thing I got to do after I weld this up and back to work on the engine, because my fan belt showed up, I'm honestly thinking about putting in a, a Kubota alternator that fits that engine. Because I'm a little concerned about the heat being so close to that, that bigger GM alternator. And I don't need a ton of amperage because this thing is going to spend so much time traveling to the dive sites that I have lots of time to charge the batteries. So the Kubota alternator I was looking on Amazon is 40 amps. That's plenty. Now the only thing is, I haven't been able to figure out if that alternator for the Kubota, it's a D722. Um, it's an upgrade alternator. 
to 40 amps. And so I don't know if it's an internally regulated alternator and I can't find any literature on it. None of the advertisements say if it is or not. So then I went and found a machine with that engine and searched for a voltage regulator for that machine. And if it doesn't have a voltage regulator, that means it's internally regulated. But then I got distracted, so I haven't finished that search. But I might just do that, but I gotta make sure it's internally regulated because I don't want to deal with a bunch of wiring and bullshit. So there we go. That's it for today. Great day, because I love this. Ciao.